By the time I was 15, I was in jail. My co-defenders who got found guilty are riding in the life sentence for it. And I lived inside a disabled toilet for a good six months. The guy owed me about 300k, bro. I, got, I made 16 grand in sales and perfume in that, in that night. Do you know what I mean? Like, he can't match it. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today we've got a special guest, goes on TikTok and absolutely is killing the game right now, Mr. Pro PT. Welcome Let's to go, the show. Yeah, what are you saying, bro? You good? All good, my brother, all good. So I brought you on here because I know you personally, yeah. I know you from for a few years now, to be fair now. It's been about what, four or five years? Yeah, about that. Must be about four or five years. Yeah. And I've always said to you, if I was to ever start a podcast, we gotta get you on here because at the end of the day, your story is something that a lot of people don't even know. Don't get it twisted. There's loads of podcasts out there of you and a lot of people know your story, but I don't even know it properly. I want to know your story. I've been with you, you know, from the last few podcasts I've done, a lot has changed. A lot, I feel like the last podcast I did was probably like before lockdown. And I think you've seen a massive yeah. change from that stage to now. So I always am excited to no, no, be here today and share the you, journey. You've changed in financially massively. But look, look, let's not jump straight into that. Let's start off with, basically, you went prison. What did you go to prison for and what's, what's, happen what's going on with that? Like, what happened? How old was you? Tell us your background story. I think the background story started off, obviously, I'm, I'm a Londoner boy, born and raised in Tottenham. Um, from a young age, I've always had this weird mindset, bro, that I'm an extremist, bro. I just want to be the best at anything I put my mindset to. And that comes from like a lot of pain, a lot of insecurities, a lot of disadvantage. But I knew from a young age, I knew how to channel that. So when I was on roads, <coughs> the things I used to do, the things I used to get up to, got me very far. At what it wasn't age? the path, what age? I'll probably say from the age of like 11. From 11? From 11, it's yeah. Young. So from the age of like 11, I started getting myself involved in certain things. And then by the time I was 15, I was in jail. But um, you when went I went jail. Is that what age you went jail at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went jail, I didn't actually get found guilty. I was actually on remand. So that's the first time and the last time I went jail. Before that, the shit I used to get up to, the things I used to do, just made me realise my, my, my potential and what I can actually achieve and how far I can take this sort of adrenaline. In. So when, when you went to prison at 15, what, well, number one, what was it for? And number two, was it like normal prison? Just a lot of crazy shit. All I've got to say is my co-defenders who got found guilty are riding in the life sentence for it. Do you know what oh, I mean? Wow. So there was a lot of involvement. It was like a build-up. It was a whole six month operation and the things that were happening, the things that I got myself involved in, I'm just glad I'm here right now and I've got this chance. And it was actually um, certain that I actually manipulated myself in the court. Okay. Speaking to the judge, doing certain things, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> <laughs> so you bust that case, yeah? Let's, just, let's just leave it at that. You bust that case. You got, got given that opportunity, come out of jail. And then even when I come out of jail, I'm still what a little bit involved. Out? I was only there for under a year, so okay. when I come out of jail, I was still heavily involved in the things that I was getting up to, but when I went to jail, I turned to Islam, bro, fully. Oh, okay. I'm a born Muslim, my mum's a revert, my dad's Algerian, my mum's Italian, but the fear and the, 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 the blessings of Islam Changing only life. came with me when I went to prison. I think it was them lonely nights in jail when you, like, from a young age, you just feel like there's, there's, there's no escape. And, being on Ramon is different than being sentenced. Because when yeah. you're on Ramon, you just don't know the... You don't know what's happening. You don't know yeah. what's happening. At least if you get sentenced, you know, all right, cool, I'm in here for one year, That's two it. years, six months. With Ramon, there's no limits. There's no there's limits. No limits. Like, but the great thing about it is I was actually in jail with my brother. Oh, fair. Yeah, well, I was in jail with my brother. We shared well, obviously, the same obviously wing. Obviously, it's not something to Do you know what I mean? We're next door to each other. Like, what was your brother in jail for? If, or is that same brother? thing. Oh, same, oh, thing. same yeah, case. Yeah, same thing. He got caught oh, up. Wow. Um, he got caught up with certain things I was always involved in. But yeah, but going there was a good experience, I'll be real with you. Like, the time I spent in jail made me find out a big part of who I am and made me channel certain things in my mind that I just took advantage over it. Do you know what I mean? So coming out to jail, still heavily involved with certain things. At this point, I got stabbed twice. In jail <coughs> or out of jail? Outside of jail. Okay. When I come out. And then um, I got married, bro, at 18. Oh, wow. Do you know what I mean? Like, young, young. I got married at 18. I was still trying to stay on faith, stay on Dean, but I was always hungry, bro. Yeah. I just always see saw things. I would say ten steps ahead than a lot of people. So when I come out of jail, when it came to making money or starting a business or anything in relation to 
get in it in because yeah, yeah. obviously you come from a, a, a disadvantaged fa- family a disadvantaged background as I knew I had to start channeling that so so when you come out obviously look I know you now and I know what the position you're in now you're good you smashed it you're doing well you got money you got your businesses that are growing which we will touch on in a little bit but what was the first opportunity that you was given when you come out of prison because a lot of the first opportunity bro was my um, community service I had to serve okay so giving back to the community made me realise the power of giving back and helping people and the power of free if you do things from a number scale. Yeah. So I had loads of insecurities and thinking, rare, like, because I've been jailed now, people are going to judge me or because I come from a disadvantaged background or so because I've found, done this. So you were not guilty though, yeah, in the end? Yeah, it? I was found not guilty, okay. but I had a lot of difficulties with that as well because there were certain things that I got given guilty for, but it was nothing in relation to what okay, the yeah, whole yeah. case was. Does that make sense? So I had to still carry that those convictions yeah. with me if I went to go apply for a job and stuff. Yeah. And I just knew I won't be I won't be given a job. I tried to. I tried to go through the roots of getting a job, applying for a job, it never lasted, but I just knew that, cool, if I'm not going to get a job, I just need to study the game right now. So I did a lot of research, like how to make money. If you've been to jail... You're going on YouTube. <laughs> like, YouTube, how to be a millionaire. Literally, how to be a millionaire. <laughs> like, there was a lot of people out there that was inspiring me at the time who I was like looking into. But I just realised, bro, this is all a number game. Like, this is before social media as well. And... I had I had clout then from BBM. Okay, BBM, BBM was like my job. thing. Like that's how I made money before I went to jail off my BBM. Yeah. And that's when I came out of jail. I posted something on my on my on my pic on, on my um Status. profile picture. No, yeah, profile yeah, yeah. picture before and after, bro. It was literally me from being a fat kid to me losing weight. Oh so yeah. I mean. And <laughs> there was actually another disadvantage that a lot of people don't know. When I come out of jail, I was given a five year ASBO, I can't even have a phone. You weren't allowed a phone. Weren't allowed a phone. Well, no bro. phone, nothing. No phone, no social media, no phone. So if you got so arrested with a phone on you, I would have gone back and I would they would have reopened the case. It, it, it wow. could have been a, like a recall kind of thing to get it. There was a disadvantage. I can't talk to my co-defenders. Even my brother, there was like a two well, years as well. No brother. phone at all, or they had to know which bro, phone. No you had? phone at all, bro. Like I was even given home arrest as well. So I was even on tag between the hours of twelve to four, and then them four hours there, bro, I had to go out there and do community service. Do you know what I mean? But Shit. once that got lifted, obviously I still had a phone, bro. You can't, you can't live without a phone, especially yeah. where I'm from, bro. Even just to update your mom to make sure you're good. Do you know what That's I mean? What I mean, like, forget so, about. I'm sitting there thinking, no phone. How am I gonna tell my dad I'm home, bro? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So I, I worked around it for five years, bro, and. When I started Pro PT, it was very difficult because I wasn't allowed to use social media and I wasn't allowed to even have a mobile phone. But I built a company around the name Pro PT where no one knew who, who I was for a good two, three years. Oh, serious? And how it started, bro, is that when I put that before and after picture, all of a sudden, people started and this you. guy from BBM who everyone used to come to as a plug, but now all of a sudden the people who have seen that journey, seen that transformation, were like, bro, how did you lose so much weight? How do you look the way you look now? Yeah. So I just generally wanted to respond to people and give people like genuine advice, genuine tips. I was going to the gym a lot. That's what kept me going, bro. That's what kept me off the roads, going to the gym. And the feeling of going to the gym, bro, the confidence that was coming within it, the attention that I was getting, the feeling of like, having a good physique, and then just realising, yo, like, I can start making money from this. So my probation officers at the time got me to do a PT course. Once I was qualified, I started applying for loads of gyms, jobs and stuff, and I got rejected. Then there was this one job after I got divorced that um, they gave me an opportunity to be a cleaner. They said, start off as a cleaner. And I said to them, don't even pay me a salary. Let me prove myself that I'm trustworthy. I can be in a working environment. I can be around people. I can obviously train myself. So I took the opportunity. And when I was there, bro, like money was low. Opportunities were down. And when I get off the roads, I've lost people around me. So I said to myself, you know what? Fuck this year. I'm not going to travel from the ends to here, which was about a two-hour journey. I'm going to find a way to adapt to live here. So, obviously, at the time, I got talking to some girls, see if I can, like, move in. And I realised, bro, that's all long. I don't need no girl right now. I want to make money, bro. Like, I need people. I need good yeah. people. I want to build a community. I want to build a foundation. And I just channeled what I learned when I come out of jail to input into what I was about to create. So, at the time... So, where did you move to? Like, how did you get... Your moved to Finchley. I moved yeah, to Finchley. How did you find a place there? <laughs> bro... I basically got a sleeping bag, bro. And there's a 24 hour gym. By like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, the gym was quiet. I would take out my sleeping bag. So you were basically homeless? But I was homeless. And I lived inside the disabled toilets for a good six months. And what got me out of it is that 
one of my clients became a girl who I started speaking really closely and I started telling her, there was something I never told no. My mum also thought I was living at a friend's house. I couldn't even tell my mum that. Do you know what I mean? Just like, one after second, everything. I never even knew this about you. Yeah, like, obviously, bro. there's a lot more than meets the eye with people because people look at you now and say like, wow, man, he's doing really well. He's been around so many famous people. He's smashing it. But bro, you was homeless for six months. Six months, in bro. In a disabled toilet. Like, literally getting support from the people around me. Like, my and clothes were getting washed by one of my the clients. Gym, they know that? Two, three people, yeah. And okay. it's like, I didn't even want to be around those sort of people yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like... You thought they were judging you kind of thing. Like, yeah, and I thought they were going to feel sorry for me and that. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. I could have got the support. I could have easily found, found myself a girl at the time and just moved into that. But I was just too money-driven and too money-focused and too, like... But, but I wanted to suffer as well. I'm someone who... I love I love suffering, bro. I believe through, through you suffering, that's how you build. That's how I get into a good position of myself in it. So... I met this girl, bro, and then, like, after six months, I got to a stage where I worked for free, and that's the reason why people ask me, why, why, why were you homeless? Like, I was actually cleaning the gym for free, working for free, offering PT sessions and classes for free. because All I for thought, free? All for free. But I played the long-term game, bro, because when I did that for free, guess what I built? You built up a massive client base. Fucking demand, bro. A demand, yeah, that after one year, I converted that, those three hours into a six-figure business in the PT industry where most people don't even hit 50K, bro. And that's what I did after a year. And that was the foundation of how I, 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 I it sort of gave me that self-trust, that self-belief that played the long-term game. It's all about people. It's all about the community. It's all about bringing people. It's all about helping people. It's all about building credit, value, trust, all these big things that eventually every year, everything I achieved because I, I basically replicated that formula. Does that make sense? So, one year came along, I did that. When they found out I was living in the disabled toilet, the managers found out I was doing free PT sessions. I was doing all this stuff. Guess what they did? They Go got on. rid of me. They got rid of you? So then I got another gym. Sweet. Three months, repeat the same formula, but this time I started selling supplements in the gym. Yeah. So that's where my whole buy something and resell it mindset came from the rose yeah, into yeah. something legit. So I started selling supplements and that's what like Protein powders and stuff like protein that. Protein powders, creating pre-workout, everything you wanted. I managed to get a wholesaler, Basically, actually, that's a lie. There was a PT there who was doing it. And when he left that gym, I just, just took over I just business. took over it kind of thing. Took over it. And I was running off that. And that's what sort of kept me Afloat. stable, helped my mum. But I still never went back home. From the age of 15, I never went back home, bro. Do you know what I mean? I always lived away. Then I managed to get my first studio flat. The girl who I'm seeing moved in now for good, i say another year and a half. Literally, my business went from Pro PT, who's doing free sessions, free classes, like just. Did you have a social media? Grinding. At, this point? at this point, I just started. You just jumped on the board. Yeah, just started Instagram, and I had the name Pro PT in my mind when I was in the gym, and when I was in jail, like that, that always stayed in me. That name Pro PT, I don't know why, bro. I just thought you got to be professional in certain, but you don't have to actually be professional. Yeah, yeah. That's where the name Pro PT comes from. Like you don't well, have that's to what be it was, professional. Pro PT and then Pro like, PT, and no one had it. And it was like I went on Instagram. I was the first one to have that name, and I went on BBM. First one to have that name. <laughs> Facebook, first one to have that name. I thought, fuck it, I'm going to use this name. Like. Well. But I repeated what I learned in that first year. I repeated that in my second gym. But it took me three months to get back to a good place. Yeah. So instead of a year, it took me three months now. Then that took off. Then all of a sudden, I went and actually started um, PTing from, a, um, from the local area. So okay. I thought to myself, like, I was looking at all these big houses. Where and was I your always, area? This is Northwest London, so like Mill Hampstead. Hill, Hampstead, okay. all these nice big yards, big yards, big bro. yards, big yards. So I'm What's here, like Bishop's Avenue. But I'm gonna, we're gonna get to that, yeah. Big so I'm yards. here now, yeah. Bearing I'm in looking mind, this, at is these. this is probably one of the wealthiest roads in London, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. After Mayfair and all of that. Yeah, but is it outside of Central? outside? Yeah, outside of Central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. them yards are fat. Let me tell you the story, bro. So when I got kicked out of the gyms and stuff, and I realized I had that clientele, I thought to myself, yeah, there was just one lady. She owns Lipsy and Nex. She owns emailed Nex? Like and Lipsy. Yeah, Nex. Oh, right. And Lipsy, she called me saying, listen, I've got a gym in my house. Can you start training me? I'm like, whoa, man, this has been kicked out two gym. I'm killing it. I'm making money, but now I don't have a, I don't have a base in it. I went round there and I saw this yard and I'm like, I'm, I'm in the game right now, bro. Mm-hmm. That was the first time the motivation aspect of living in a big house and one day own a big house. Right. Started. I went in there, I started training, and I thought, fuck it. Like, if I can build a relationship with her, I can replicate what I did in the gym, but now in these houses in the road. So what I did, I actually went around offering free PT sessions, to leaflets, all these to all these houses. 
None of them replied back to me. About a month, two later, I got one rich Egyptian man who lived on Bishop Avenue and he got back to me, bro. And he said to me, train my daughter. I went there, bro. I walked into this house, swimming pool as soon as you walk in, gym around it. It was like a big, massive open plan. And he said, my daughter's there, go train. I went there, trained her. And those areas there, it's a community-based area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if one person likes you, yeah. everyone likes you. Exactly. And within that community-based area, every Friday, a lot of them come together. Yeah, yeah. So after training, yeah, they're building that Jewish relationship. Based, a community, that's Say again? Very, it's very Jewish-based, that community. Jewish, exactly. So Shabbat comes, Friday night comes, they invite me down to these dinners. So you're sitting there. The like, neighbours okay. who rejected me were sat in them tables. So they're like, this is the guy that got her in shape. This is the guy that they started to... Because obviously, I've got long hair, plaits, they're going to recognise me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, night, the name ProPT is a smooth... Do you know what I mean? So, bro, I just took over that whole street. Got to the point, I said, you know what? Fuck it. I don't even want to go to too many houses no more. I've done it. I've seen it. I want to get my own yard. Worked in a PT studio. Yeah. But let me ask, boxer. how much was you charging them? Like, obviously, you were When I first started, it was about £60, but I got to my peak, it was between 120 to 150 an hour. That's so, you can, do the, ma- you can do the numbers. Yeah, Normal bro, like, PT is like, what, £30 an hour? 30, 35 40 pound an hour? Depends what area, but my normal rate out there was literally starting off with was 60, but then eventually when I got to my peak, 120, 150, That's easy. Big money. big money, bro. Times it by 10, times it by 16 hours a day. Yeah. And I was putting the work, I was putting those hours in. Multiply that by 365, I literally never took a day off, bro. So when I was there, I said, cool, I need to go to a PT studio. I end up collaborating with someone else. And he fucked me over, over a year. Like, I worked with him, promised me all the money, never signed no paper. I was young, I think I was like 21. Then I said to myself, fuck this, bro. Did you ever even take a PT course? Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, I you done the PT course? Yeah, 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 yeah I thought this was like self done, you trained. No, no, no. Like, my probation officers gave me the opportunity. Okay, okay, Do you get okay. it? I'm, yeah, pro- yeah, yeah. Like, the judge said to me, if you want to come out of jail and you want to, like, do, do something. something, you got to do a course. I was, bro, I never had no GCSEs. So I did my PT course. And then, literally, once I worked in that gym, yeah. the guy fucked me over. I thought, you know so what? So who was this? Your business partner? It wasn't some... even a business partner, just someone I spoke to. Okay. I bought him clout. I bought him a following. I bought him <laughs> fucking clientele. I made his gym blow up. Was he the owner of the gym? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. it was a bit of a mix-up. The guy owed me about 300k, bro, and never paid me. 300k? 300k in a year, and never paid me, bro. And I got fucked over. I was like, cool, I'll take the L. What I did then, obviously, I went, I thought, you know what? Bro, I used to train clients in their houses. I'm in the oh, area. I'm, I've that. got links now. I've got estate agents. I've got people. I've got good clientele. I've got the foot through. I've got money now. I went and, and rented a mansion myself. How much and was the rent? 10 grand a month. But without the upkeep, maintenance, of the swimming pool, the spa room, the cleaner. Man, I had, I had a chef living in there. I had a cleaner who lived so there. you were living a good life. Bro, it was, it was crazy. Imagine at 21, people gone to see Pro PT just come out of jail. He's homeless now. Everyone knows my story because like yeah. articles are getting involved. Like Daily Mail's reaching out. People getting involved. And I was like, I got a plan here, bro. I was like, I want to get this house. I did the maths. I thought, you know what? 10 grand, I can make that in a week. What's 10 grand? Got three weeks profit right now. No yeah. overhead. I've got a gym in my yard. Yeah. And I literally just went fucking ham. Invite all my clients over. I saw you. But it wasn't easy to get the house. Let give, me tell you give, that. Give us a list of the celebrities you've trained. Just quick while you was in that mention. Because I've seen a few videos of some... Who was that girl that jumped in the pool? <laughs> Make sure there was loads. <laughs> uh, was it Kenza? But loads. I'll be real with you. Some A-list celebrities, I can't even mention the name for confidentiality reasons. Uh, tell us some of the ones that you can mention. Who have you trained? People that you probably see with a big following. I'll probably say Kenza, say Demi Rose. I say most of the people on Love Island. I actually got some girls onto Love Island because of that. Sweet like, yeah, I was working closely with agencies. I started working with big models. Um, Simon Cow. Who else, bro? Loads of Aura. Loads of people, bro. Loads, like Pro PT rang bells. I'll be real with you. Within that network of people, it's very everyone easy. Knows. Once you're in there, you've got everyone. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, we all socialise in the same places. We go out to them in the same places. We network. But it wasn't that easy. So once I got the house, actually, I bought my PT business there. Then I thought to myself, you know what? Like, I want to... Like, this is when Love Island started popping up. I said, you know what? I want to build my own movement. I've got a villa, basically, in London. Yeah. Swimming for. I've got <laughs> a gym to myself. I'm like, Love I'm 21. I'm single as fuck now. Like, my ex at the time, the girl who I built the business with me, we broke up now. Got my little brother on board right now. Like... We're two good, good looking guys. You know what I'm saying? We've got mad energy. Let's yeah. fucking turn this house into content. Yeah. So I started creating content and I started inviting celebrities, influencers, models for free content. That's how I started. Free was content. Free, yeah, just free at the start, content. yeah, at the start, yeah. Free content. Got to the point, bro, where like literally A list celebrities started emailing me, they started calling me, they started reaching out saying, yo, 
then when it come for PT sessions, bro, I literally took over social media. At the time, it was hard to build social media. It was like Instagram was like not even at its peak. Like to for you to post something on Instagram, you won't get the sort of viral content you get now if you post something on TikTok. Now you know what I mean? Different. It was, it was now graph. Different. It was a graph. Like to even just get. 5k views on your page on it's your post deal. it was a big deal like people respect you i had i think 10k followers and all of a sudden had 20k followers but bro i ran a business bro and i ran a business we never put my face out there and i ran a business that it was just literally the clientele bought me business so yeah. i'll do the maths and i ran through it after being there for a year the landlord wanted to sell the house to me i didn't want to buy it i didn't <laughs> want to be tied to it i got myself another house another mansion on Totridge lane Buzz off the same thing. This time, whatever I learned to build you done that, straight did in. straight away. It took me like less than a month. Me and my brother had it popping. Lockdown comes in. I get married. And then I said to myself, I don't want to be a PT no more, bro. I can't do this PT things. At this Was it point, hard as well having a partner who... Did she... Of course, you train a lot of females. What did, did she find it a problem? She was mature and I got her involved. Okay, cool. I got involved, you know what I mean? And me and PT clients, bro, I, didn't, I never mixed that pleasure with, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I kept it always legit, kept it professional, always kept it as a business thing only, innit? So once she came on board, it was smooth. And then lockdown came in, I thought, the fitness game is bullshit, bro. This is <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trading my time right now for money. Yeah, yeah. So spoke to my brother, helped him build his fragrance company, started taking off. And I started seeing him making money whilst he's sleeping, bro. And I'm thinking the only time I'm making money while I'm sleeping is the brand deals I'm doing. Yeah. And even with the brand deals, they're not consistent. You know what I mean? It's like who you work with. If I had a big A-list celebrity, brand deals would reach out to me. And I think you're not coming for me, you're coming for them. 100%, that's right. And then obviously watching you, bro, watching you do things <laughs> like you do. Midnight Madness. Oh, I moved know. to Essex. I moved to Essex. When I came to Essex, I thought, I need to put myself out there. And I've got this thing about setting challenges. So in the meantime, I'm setting these mad I, challenges. I want, I want to tell them something just quick on that, yeah? So when, so me and Pro Peter, I've known him years now, yeah? And when I was doing Midnight Madness, this was when the boxing just got involved. He phoned me up and he goes, bro, I want to fight anyone. <laughs> anyone. And I was like, bro, like, in my head, I'm thinking, this guy, bro, like, is he mad, bro? Like, what's hap- like, what's, what, what's, what's happened to the world? And he's like, Mikey, Anybody. No, he was like, true. go on there and find me someone to fight. And I was like, oh, like, what about this guy? Yes. But he didn't even look at his Instagram profile. Just he was straight. just like, yeah, I'm ready. Line it up. I'm ready to go. Yeah, it was mad. And then I, and then but I realized. But yeah, watching you, watching what you lot did, I thought, fuck it. I need to come <laughs> on board, bro. Like, right. This is the next generation. This is where it's at. Social lives, live streams, posting content, brand deals, creating hype, doing all of that. I thought, yeah, you know what? This is a bit of me right now. Like everyone knows me to be the savage guy who sets mad challenges, goes on crazy runs, no sleep, grafting all the time, around the people, in the, around the right people at this point, got all the biggest celebs clientele all coming over, came over to Essex, built Pro PT in Essex now, took over, literally, like in a year, I took over the whole Essex, bro. Yeah, no, no. And then at this point, so you know what, I don't even need this, bro. I need to, I need, I need to be out there. Jumped on Sunday, smoke. Right, my first wait, wait, wait. You can't just say you jumped on Sunday. You gotta explain what happened, bro. So called Mikey, I said Mikey. Pro PT was literally, he wanted to fight anyone, yeah? He wanted to get involved. Bearing in mind, you never boxed before. Never. Never boxed before. Because I, I asked him, I was like, bro, be real with me. Have you boxed? Because I don't want to go put you forward and then you go on there, smash a guy up and it comes out and you've had five fights with him <laughs> or something. So he's like, Mikey, I've never fighted. I want to fight. Just line it up. I'm ready to go. Boom. First fight you had. Who did you fight first? This guy who just come out of jail, oh, bro. Oh, yeah. This guy was a lump. I like, phoned him up. Lump. Remember the phone call? <laughs> I phoned him up. I was like, Yo, bro. He was like, yo, man, what's up? I was like, are you sure you want to scrap this guy, bro? Because this guy in pictures is a wham yeah, guy. Wham like. guy. But wham. you banged him out. You done your thing. Just banged him out straight. Banged him out. So now what are you, 4-0? 4-0. Oh? Oh, no. Yeah. 4-0. Oh, no. But even that, you know, like, I brought something to the table. They brought something to the table, but it wasn't my end goal. For me, it was just like, I just wanted to get used to this whole live streaming like stuff. Phone. Yeah, it was like a live stream stuff. I'm hearing about TikTok. Still ain't got TikTok at this point. Yeah, yeah. Then I started TikTok and I remember this. I'm seeing, I'm an observer, but I watch things. I plan things six months ahead, one year ahead. I'm really planning. Like right now, I'm thinking what I'm doing in the next six months and I've got things patterned. Do you know what I mean? That's how far ahead I like to think. And I'm watching, observing. I thought, yeah, I'm going to take over it. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm wearing. I know exactly where I'm going, who I'm networking with, what I'm putting out there. Because right now, what I achieved, especially in the last couple of weeks, I said to myself, 
I want to be the most clouted person on TikTok right now. Yeah, yeah. Bro. You know what? A lot of people, yeah, say, oh, yeah, he's a clout chaser. And one thing I rate about you, you say, yeah, I am. What? I am. That is what I want. I do want clout. What? Bro, clout. There's, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't want clout. But you know, in the back of their head, that's of what course. they want. 100%. But you just, you're like, yeah, this, I'm on here for clout. What? Like, <laughs> but I respect it. Let me because tell you something. Platforms like that, bro. See anyone who says you're out here for clout. Well, what are these platforms for then? Yeah. They're here for clout. If yeah, you don't even be else. real with yourself and say the truth, bro, how is anyone, how is any of the audience ever going to respect you? Especially when you start getting clout. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and plus, I had a game plan, bro. I started my own fragrance business when I went on Sunday Smoke. People wondering what it is. Shout out to this right here. Your tour of London. Zoom in on that right now, whoever's editing this. <laughs> Zoom in on this. If you like smelling nice, you guys really know I'm the most trending person on TikTok when it comes to fragrance right now. We're only getting started. But yeah, um... So you started the fragrance business just before... But I went. wanted to have something in line with getting client. There was no point in getting client if I never had a business plan. Yeah, you never had nothing my to My business plan was, you know what, I'm going to cut my own product, my own name. Once I get this clout, I'm going to build relationships. I'm going to do exactly what I did with ProPT when I first started offering free sessions. I'm offering free entertainment. But you want to support me right now, you like smelling nice, I'm going to build a snowball effect. Bro, in six months' time, six months into it, bro, I turned your tour of London into a six-figure business in just six months. You know what I mean? And that was purely from chasing clout. That was purely from sticking to my words, giving people what they wanted, channeling, networking, talking to the right people. And I'm here now, bro. And just off TikTok, I buzz off it. <laughs> so yeah, no, let's let's explain TikTok then, because that's what that's what you're smashing right now. Yeah. Like, as much as I know you from doing the pro PT, doing from your tour, doing all of that, the reason you're on this podcast right now is because you're smashing TikTok it's differently. Crazy. Like you're known in the industry, but on TikTok right now, bro, your name, every time I'm on TikTok scrolling, <laughs> it's either you or Andrew Tate somewhere. I'm like, fuck <laughs> me, bro. What's going on with this guy? That was the game plan. Bro, Watching look, Andrew Tate, bro, bro I studied and I watched a lot of things and I've channeled that. I don't even sit here promoting my brand. You don't really see yeah, me no, talking about my brands. That. It's just literally get clout, go viral. Promo code. Give the promo code. Boom. Done. Go on my phone. Bling, 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 bling. <laughs> so what's, what's going on with TikTok? Forget about all of that, bro. Let's pause a sec. Yeah. You're wearing a bally. Talk to us, man. Sitting on visit me wearing a bally. What's going bro. on? Because you've shown your face before, so people know what you look like. What's going on with the bally? I say in the last six months, bro, I've never received so much clout where I literally go outside, bro, and I get pressured. Not pressured in a bad way, but, bro, like, I can't do my thing. Serious? I can't link people. I go out, bro. It's mad. Well, and this is off the back of photos and stuff like that. Yeah, from, from, from a positive way, though. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? People actually rate what I'm doing. And like, when I'm on TikTok Live, I'm not just trolling, but I'm actually educating people. I'm channeling people. I'm guiding. I'm motivating people. I'm giving people... Gu I'm, I'm letting people know the next move as well. So it's not even like, oh, he's a, he's a waffler. Everything I've said, I've done it and I've shown it, I've proven it. And this is still early stage for me. Like, the things I've got planned in the next six months, bro, inshallah, it's going to be crazy, isn't it? So, so what is the, what, what's happening right now with you? Well, right with the Pink Valley, I'll be real with you. So the Pink Valley, bro... I've always been someone who never showed my face. Deep down, bro, I'm an insecure, broken kid, bro. So like, down. 100%, bro. Deep down, I, I bat my demons every day. The things I've achieved and the things I've overcome is because deep down, bro, I'm a broken kid. You know what I mean? We're all broken in our own ways, whether it's like breakups, whether it's like be coming from like a place where you've had nothing. A broken home. Or home, like, all these things. everything. You know what I mean? So, you guys know, if you guys watch me, bro, ProPT gets 90% female audience on all platforms. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I get a lot of female attention, bro. It's not always good. Do you know what I mean? True. But at the same time, it was my game plan because I know on the online platforms, bro, females are better consumers. Do you reckon? When it comes to spending money? Yeah, million percent. Yeah, million percent, bro. So everything I do is to seek female attention, bro. When I get that female attention, I've got a plan behind it. I want to make money, bro. At the end of the day, I'm supposed to pay my bills. I'm not going to chase girl. No. I get girls. I get girls' attention. I'm around the hottest girls you can think of. Like Men come up to me like, bro, how the fuck did you make this thing? <laughs> I'm like, I'll be real with you. I didn't we've, even, we've had that I didn't even shout her. She shouted me, bro. It's crazy. You know what I mean? And like, people are attracted to winners, isn't it? Like, if you're out here making money, bro, and you got clout, it's a different fire. Do you know what I mean? And you know that as well, Mikey. You know what I mean? I've experienced you. I've seen you. I've been around you. <laughs> You've got a few mutuals, isn't it? So we got we got a few we got a few mutuals. <laughs> a few yeah. mutuals a bit. Well, I'm not involved in this. No comment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but yeah. So the Pink Valley, bro. I thought you know what? I've so never what, no more face on socials. 
at the moment it's it's a balance because okay. I actually got a next plan coming out right now. Okay, okay. Like, shall I say it? You tell me, boy. It's your plan. I'm bro. gonna say it, bro. Say it then. Let's bro, go. Let's I'm making it. my own shampoo, hair conditioner, and hair oil, bro. I'm known for my hair. Yeah, true. You Everywhere I go, I've I've deliberately built a female target audience. So what? Your own shampoo? Because I'm launching my own shampoo conditioner hair oil, bro. Is this? The I first go time? on live, bro. First time you ever told anyone? Yeah. I go on live, bro. I get about 5K live streams right now. My content's hitting half a million, quarter million views. Some of them hit a million views on TikTok. Bro. Girls need to know the secret. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I put on a belly right now. Just to let, just hide it a little bit. You see bit. what I'm saying? Hide it here. So when, we, when are you looking to launch this? Literally, it's on the process right now. Of like, How long are we looking at? Weeks? Months? You know what? I wanted to fetch the product. That's the most okay. important part. Yeah, I wanted to make it friend, f- I'm like, f- I wanted to make sure it was healthy. It was organic. It was all natural. And I also, I'm not going to sit here and lie to people to make money. That's one thing I do. I don't promote something fake. Yeah, I'm Fagus company. I'm Fagus business. Yo, you cut my stuff, bro. Yeah, no, I love they this bank. Stuff. Do you know what I mean? They're not. They're, it's, it's not bullshit. So same thing with my hair product, bro. My hair, I've genuinely grown my hair. Mm-hmm. First of all, for clout. Second of all, yeah, ladies. You've always had long hair. It's from when I've known you. You've but that's what had... I wanted to do. I just I wanted to forget. I wanted to stand out, bro. I wanted yeah. to stand out. I gave them what they wanted. Females love a man with long hair. It's different, bro. The attention you get when you got long hair. I get hair. quite a few females, but men ain't got long hair. Yeah. <laughs> but when you start growing your hair, bro, trust me, bro. Like, it's different. So obviously I thought, you know what? If my tar- target audience is female, I'm not going to sit here and sell them a t-shirt. I'm not going to sit here and sell them something that's not relevant to my audience. So I thought, you know what? I need to come out with my own product that's relevant to the to the audience I've got right now. So yeah. that's what I'm working on at the moment. The so whole what are we, looking at? What are we looking at? How long? Give us a time scale so people watching this can be knowing how long we're expecting. Just keep watching on TikTok. If I Months? give them a time scale, right? It's in the process, isn't it? End of this year? Inshallah. Yeah, this year. Do you know what I mean? Inshallah. Okay, but that's cool. the process I'm looking at. And well, I, I'm glad you actually said that to me. It gives me more pressure to be well, now fully you're certain of it. Yeah, we're in October now, yeah? That's giving me more pressure. Two I love months. the pressure. Two Why months. Not? And Why I'm expecting not, a little care package once it's ready. Bring it on here. Bro, it's going to be different. It's going to cure one of the biggest problems a woman suffers right now. Is dandruff. Hair. Not dandruff, what? bro. Hair loss. Hair loss We're is so cure huge. cure hair loss. Bro, see ladies out here, yeah? You're trying to take over the world right I'm now. taking over, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you now, see ladies right now, if you ask more skills, bro, they either got extension of this damage their hair by yeah. when fucked up product or dying in their hair. Like, no one was educating these females about how to look, take care of their hair. And you've seen my hair, but I've got long, thick, healthy. My hair comes down to my bum. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's how... And it's, to grow hair, bro, it's, 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 a pro, it's a living thing. You've got to take care of it as well. Like, it's something that... It's the only thing that grows in your body after you hit a certain peak. Do you know what I mean? So... Bro, I've so got you're the, telling us here right now, you're trying to make a product that cures hair loss. Cures My bro, well, I'm just telling you straight. If you do that, that money you're going to be making sends on my way because 100%, you're going to be not smashing only that, bro, the game, bro. Not only that as well, bro. It's also about what you eat as well. So where I've got the fitness background, the nutrition background, you're it's, gonna a, implement it's a package. Into, okay, do you know what I mean? It's okay, a package, okay. isn't it? And it's something that will be affordable. It'll be something that it will be done through social media. It's something that proves to myself and anyone who wants to come on board how I literally create a fragrance from nothing and turn it to something. Imagine when I can. Well, imagine what I can do when I'm actually out here. Yeah, do you know what I mean? True. Doing certain things. The Bali was literally something that is within myself, something that I deal with, something I don't want to show my face, bro. I just don't want to sit there reading compliments. Do you know what I mean? I just want yeah, to no, be no. there buzzing with people. And I launched the Bally's about a week ago, bro. And Sold out. Go on. Do you know what I mean? That's the sort of number of games I'm playing right now on social media. And it was so all, social all, media all right now, When I'm scrolling through, I see your... Getting involved with drama every single day. Literally every day. Every single day. Every so what's, day. Up, what's going on right now? What drama are you in right now? Because <laughs> I, I know you're going to be live <laughs> By the on time TikTok. you launch this, bro, I'll be moving. Uh, yeah, there's going to be something new <laughs> going on. This will be like yesterday's news, bro. I know, I know right yeah. now you're going to be going live tonight, yeah? Because you're live every day, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got like, I see you with girls on TikTok. I see you with guys arguing with this person, that person. Like, bro, don't, don't it become too much? Let me explain something, bro. When you go into something prepared... It can't, it can't affect you. Because I'll be honest, during like, when I was doing Midnight Madness, yeah. it come to a point where some days, as much as it was so good being on live, but I feel like when you're on live, you're constantly having to keep a happy face on. And like even doing podcasts, yeah? Right now for the 35 minutes we've been talking, you've got to have high energy. You can't slack. You've got to be constantly like happy. You've got to be awake and stuff. Doesn't that just become too much for you some days and you're like oh bro, you know what this is I've been me. through worse in life bro this is nothing <laughs> do you know <laughs> what I mean like Fair when deal. I generally say I'm built different but I'm actually built different and like I don't fake on social media 
that's the thing. That's the reason why I think it was very easy for it's me. A lot easier. You just chill, to leave the camera over. and just. Not only that, but also you got to understand we live in a very negative world. Especially TikTok is full of negatives, full of bullshit. If you're feeling what they want, but you got a plan, you flip the magnet. Do you know what I mean? And I always say that I'm here. If I get hate, you are going to become a fan. I feel sorry for you that you're watching me. You know, to understand that people now watch people stream live is a bit weird. Do you know what I mean? It's what weird. Do you mean? It's weird to understand that people sit there and watch people. It says a lot about the person who's watching. Or well, do you not watch lives? No. Nah. All my life, all my life, unless I know the person and yeah, I've got a relationship, yeah, I don't true, know true. what goes on. I don't care. I don't, I don't no, follow people. I I'll watch. If I know the person, yeah. like personally, like even when you've got live, yeah, you'll see I'll jump in for five minutes, yeah. watch it and then jump off because it's a bit weird. It is like, weird. You're doing your live life. Like you do your thing, bro. I'm not going to sit here and just watch. 100%. But a lot of people, bro, they, they watch it like it's a TV show. It's crazy. Everyone, not like, that. tuning in and that's it. That's what they're watching. Bro, anyone out there, Post content to get you on your first K, you can make money from this shit. I've got my friends on TikTok making 30 grand a week. 30 bags a week? A week on live streams. The most I made in a week was five grand from doing nothing. Big money. From drama. That's, big, that's someone's two months after tax salary. Average person. Oh, more than two months. Made that in a week. You literally made that in a week. That's big. Do you know what I mean? Like, now I can go on live, sit on live, three, four, five, five, 500 pound. Easy. Easy, like just chilling. And that, I'm not going to lie to you, I use that to reinvest in charities, giving back to people. You know, I do loads of giveaways. Cash giveaways is a massive thing right now for me. Bro. Is that what you're doing at the minute? Massive. Cash yeah. giveaways. Screen record my live stream right now, post it in the next 24 hours. If you tag me and the video of everyone else who reposted me gets the most clout, I'm sending you £50. Pound. Well, I think you should get you know screen record this video right here. Screen record right now repost it whoever gets the most views right now on this live right now you're gonna get yourself two sprays and a hundred pound so when i post this right now on tiktok run this thing right you know up. what bro i'll match it deal i'll match it deal. let's hit a million views right now post this to tiktok tags blue tick show and pro.pt whoever gets the most views i'll give a hundred pounds 100 percent. i'll back that we look after you bro don't <laughs> we look you, after you, yeah. you said you want a free spray bro <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get life you know it is fly. You can't even pay fifty pound. I don't ever spend for advertising marketing, but you can't even pay fifty pound to TikTok for them to give you that much exposure. No, it's and true. it works. All they're doing is reposting. Yeah, and most accounts on TikTok are burner accounts. You'd be surprised. You know, I, I agree with that. They are. So they go viral, and then they gain one thousand followers, and then they can go on live and try to troll you. Yeah, so it it, it's a it's a massive encouraging thing. And I prepare people. I told people, listen, tonight I'm doing drama. Tonight I'm trolling. Tonight I'm to doing the record. get ready screen recording. Screen record post. It's them that get you viral, bro. I'm not yeah, viral because I've got half a million followers or I've got a million followers. I'm, I don't even have, but I lose accounts on a weekly basis. If you yeah, go on TikTok right now, I've got about 20 accounts. So how many, I know, but you've got bare so accounts. Many. You get banned overnight. You can literally go on live, say the wrong thing, you're banned. You've Start got again. way too many accounts because I was looking at, like the other day, you sent me a message. You were like, I got pro.pt, pro.pt backup, pro.pt yeah, backup too. And I was like, bro, it's crazy. Like you got, like, you must have like six accounts, no? About 20 right now. 20? Raw. I've got accounts that are ready now just in case I get banned. <laughs> <laughs> so in total, let's say you wouldn't have got banned, yeah? yeah. How many followers do you think you'd be sitting on? Right now? Followers, probably like half a mil. Oh, right, but my followers are not followers where you just go viral, you took a cute pictures or you did a little dancing video. Yeah, my yeah, my yeah, clout, yeah. bro, is because people are streaming. Like my followers go up because I'm streaming. Yeah. By the time I come off live every night, you can see how many viewers I've watched you. Let's say I've been on live for three, four hours. Yeah. It's about 100,000, 200,000. Serious? Yeah, in that night period. That's unique accounts. It's not like that's how many views you got. No, no, that's, a, that's unique accounts. That's Pro unique accounts. accounts. Yeah, it's mad. Bro, that's mad. And this is only the start. There's no limits to this. So, what's your five year plan then? Because you five say year you plans. plan five year, uh, a year in advance, yeah? Of course, you've got a five year goal. In five years, like I've got a goal in my head. In five years, I want to be here. And then you must have it. Tell us what's your plan? Run a, f run a few online businesses off TikTok shop, off Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, just be in a position, bro, where like literally. How old are you now? 26, just turned 26. So let's say by March. 30. What's your, cause they say like life changes at 30. What do you want to be doing by 30? But I just love creating opportunity for people and I love helping people. Behind closed doors, bro, you know me as a person, bro. I'm just down to earth. I do what I want. You know what I mean? Like for me mainly, it's keep setting mental challenges, keep conquering the game and keep up with trends, keep up with the movement, keep up with what's going on and be fearless, bro. And just keep traveling. You know, I want to be married. I want to have kids. Like these things, like the, yeah. the main core, my dean is so important, bro. I'll never forget my dean. I just stay steady with my dean. Keep praying my five daily prayers, bro. 
build a community and that's it. Like, you don't need money. I'll be real with you. You don't need money to be happy. You don't need clout to be happy, but it's an advantage. If you have it, you can create further opportunity if you've got the right intention. So no, I, I just buzz off this. I buzz. I generally am happy all the time. Are you ever going to come off TikTok? Depends what happens, bro. Next, TikTok wasn't a thing a year ago. I see, I see, I see the movement now. I came on there and I fucking smashed it. What about Sunday Smoke? What's happening with you and that? That's done. Then people are done. But they're done. They're back up. Are they? Tyrone and Bouncer. I haven't they? been watching. They got Sunday Smoke this Sunday. Is it? I, I don't even know. Are you not jumping on that? I'm not interested. It's, that's not even a platform itself. I'll be with you. Why? What happened? Because what, people what's... are fake. People are fake and True Colors show now. Everyone who I fell out with, who stood together, only a week ago, all fell out. Do you know what I mean? I'm not around fake people. I'm a real person. People who have been around me long enough know I'm real. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't. Are you gonna fight on any more platforms? Are you yeah, still yeah, fighting? I've got, that's another thing I'm not gonna talk about. But I've got. You got stuff in the pipeline. The reason why I won't even go on a platform like that, bro, they can't afford me, bro. <laughs> I told Bouncer straight away, but I was on one of his fight. I think what, the first or second fight. Yeah. I, got, I made 16 grand in sales and perfume in that in that night. Do you know what I mean? Like he Just can't match that. He can't match that. I'll be real with you. He's out here paying people like pennies. That pennies that won't even cover one month training camp if you've got a good coach. You know. And like, there's bigger, bigger and better things out there. Never settle for nothing, innit? What about one of the like Misfits cards? You want to try and get on one of them? So I'm in talks with people right now, innit? Okay. Especially with boxing. The boxing elements let me down as well because of my injuries as well. I've got some yeah, fucking injuries. Yeah, I remember injuries. you lost fight. You from couldn't time, fight because yeah. of your shoulder, is it? It's just mad. But it doesn't stop me from going out. If the money's right and, you know what I mean, it makes sense, I'll do it. What happened with HS Tiki Toki? We that saw was, that one. What happened there? Everything I do, most of what people need to realize, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna beat myself out. A lot of it's stage. Say that again, bro. Chinese from views, yeah? I'm scared, bro. You're under pressure. I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I don't want to smoke, bro. Told him. Told him you don't want to smoke. Post it and get five guys doing this, innit? Well, that hit like 2.3 million a day, that view. So what happened? Just trolled. That's it, I'm a troll. Was it real? No. What, set up? Kind of. What, what do you mean, kind of? What he wasn't expecting it, but everyone else in the room was trying. I, but I never knew who HS was. I'd be wrong. Oh, so he never knew? 50 50. So basically, it not, people I, were telling him, like, I never knew what was going on. I didn't know who this guy was. I'd be wrong with you. I, walked, I don't know people, bro. I know people that affiliate myself with. I walked into a room, everyone said, I'm going to go troll him. I'm going to stick it on my man. I'm going to stick it on my man. Yeah. My man needs to be stuck on. And I'm thinking, you lot are not doing this. Like, an hour in right now, I'm sat here. I'm at this boxing event. No one's put it on my man. And they're saying, you get mad clout. You get mad clout. I'm like, I can't say no more. I went in, no one's done it. The people who said they're going to troll him were fucking taking selfie fan pictures of him. <laughs> I went out to him and I said, uh, the video's short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the hood was actually long. I went up to him and I just said, yo, bro, like, what's good? Let's get this cracking, innit? And he took it personal. And then after, everyone was like, oh, he's doing it for clout. It's nothing like that. Because people got defensive around me thinking, like, oh, like, bro, don't do that. Because they were going to do it and they never got the chance to do it. Yeah, yeah. Then, bro, I'm on roads. If I stick it on someone, people can. Say, oh, bro, that's bullying and stuff. But I was doing it for clout. I told him, bro, I said, I'm doing this for clout, innit? He's asked me, oh, you won't even get 5K views from this video. I said, what? <laughs> I was like, say no more. Posted it. Straight Posted up, it. Man. Got the most hate ever in my life. Really? So much hate. And how did you cope with all the hate? Who did bro, all the shit? I had a fucking business plan behind it, bro. I thought clout, videos, views, And hate. was you getting sales from that? Anything I'd do on TikTok, bro. Yeah, but when you was getting the hate, were them haters still buying your product? I don't know about that. You can't channel who you buy. No, but in a sense, as was your did your numbers go up that day? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, they Bro, did, yeah? Anything I do on TikTok right now, anything, even yeah, if I get someone to land on my website, even if I collect an email, there's there th we've got plans. Like in the next week, I've got people that have mastered e-commerce businesses that know how to retarget, how to yeah, yeah. do that side of it. I'm not good at that. I'm just good at creating content, going viral, that's networking. Kind of that's, that's your people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me right now, bro, I'm just out there. And I'll do what I can to get out there. And just keep running the game, bro. That's it. So you're 26, you're running a, what would we say? An online business. An on, a very successful online yeah. business. You're, you've done really well in the boxing industry. If there's someone watching this, young, who's thinking, oh, you know what, I want to jump on TikTok and start doing drama, would you recommend it to them? To an extent, if you go in there with a good game plan and you know that this is entertain, I always tell people, this is entertainment purpose. I even turn around and say, guys, you know that was fake. That was is that what you do? You tell them. Yeah, I have to, bro. Serious? Of course. Why am I gonna, <laughs> bro? None of it out there is real. And you know when it's real, you actually get cancelled. Yeah. Nice. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'll be real with you. you. It's not even you get cancelled, bro. You're showing a side to yourself which is a bit tapped, 
And you can't even be promoting that stuff. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll be real with you. You can't be promoting that kind of stuff out there. Yeah, no, I so it. obviously I let people know and people know I'll post a clout chat. Now, every live I go to, I'll be real with you. As soon as I jump in, you know, it says so. property joined. The comments already start feeding off me. Serious? I've probably got girls who sit on live and just talk about me. It's mad. <laughs> <laughs> You're living that good life. <laughs> but but look, yeah, man. I'll be real with you. Is there anything else you want to say on the Blue Tick Show? Bro, I just want to say thank you for you for giving this opportunity, bro. And this is right. like something that would definitely need eventually a part two as well. So listen, 100% there's going to be a part two. So I've recently started this new thing on the show, yeah? You're my first person to actually even do it. So I've got, I got this here. <laughs> this is an envelope, yeah? Cool. Blue envelope for the Blue Tick Show. And inside, I've just got a piece of paper. It's a normal piece of paper. Yeah. And I've got, I want you to write a question for the next guest coming on. I'm not telling you who the guest is. I don't want to know what question you're writing, so don't tell me it. You write it and then seal <laughs> it, close it, and I'm starting the next episode with your question. Same question, yeah. So not something too crazy, bro, because I'm not going to know the question and the guest is going to open it. So nah, once it, once it, once it, once it. I've got to seal it as well. you got to seal it. I don't want to see what it says. <laughs> so here, I'm going to pass this to you. Hey, I'm, jump, I'm doing a little promo on this one. I can't lie. This is going to be a quick promo. Where's the paper? Inside it. Pull it out, write it, and... I don't want to see what it says. It's a bit of a tricky one. Write it on the table, write it on the table. But don't let me see. I can't lie, I even put my number in there as well. So hopefully you put your a, number in hopefully there? Hopefully it's a goal, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I need a blue tick wifey right now. <laughs> well, look, we've got this right here. That's going to the next guest. I don't even know who's jumping on next. Jeez. So whoever is jumping on next... You can get pro PT's right, number. Listen, blue tip wifey, shout me in it. I need a blue tip myself, bro. But I think you'll get one That's soon. Come, goal. real talk shout soon. Come, hundred <laughs> percent. But listen, it was lovely having you on, my come brother. On, bro, on and way. I'll see you again soon. Shout Guys, love. make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And That's everyone cool. who's watching this from Pro PT's TikTok, you heard what we're doing. It's a two hundred pound giveaway. What did it? You tell them what to do, bro. Screen you record to... this thing right now. Repost it at all our accounts at Mikey and the blue the, the blue tick show show yeah. And then the video that gets the most clout, once we post the podcast on YouTube, you will get the giveaway. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Done. Run Easy. it up on Instagram. Like, if you comment a hundred times, you're going to get our attention. So make sure you're commenting a hundred times in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Let's go. Cool.